Hey guys, welcome into my channel. So today I want to test out the new launch from NYX. This is the Blur Foundation. This does claim to be 12 hours of hydration on this foundation. So I thought I'd actually do a wear test today. I try a lot of new foundations and skin tints on camera, but I've gotten away from like doing wear tests because I just don't have the time. So I apply it. And then sometimes I don't update in the comments. So I want to do that in today's video. So I picked this up. It did arrive yesterday. I think it just launched maybe like five or six days ago. It was pretty fast shipping and I think I picked it up on launch day. I tried to get out as much of my NYX products as I have so I can kind of do like mostly a full face of NYX when testing this foundation. So that's about it for my intro. Let's get into testing the foundation. So I just pulled it up on the website and I want to read a little bit about this. So I know that it was made in Colombia. It has a 12 month shelf life. It is your standard one fluid ounce and it is vegan and cruelty free. So this comes in 24 different shades. What they say about this is it's the foundation that blurs it all. Skin so smooth, better than a filter. Why we love it. Meet Bear With Me Blur Tint Foundation, a medium buildable coverage tint foundation that blurs it all. From pores to dark spots and imperfections, available in 24 shades to complement a range of skin tones. This breathable tint foundation applies easily and leaves the skin with a smooth, healthy looking and visibly brighter appearance. The blurring, non-greasy formula helps control shine all day without looking cakey, ashy or chalky. Plus, the lightweight foundation delivers up to 16 hours of comfortable transfer and fade resistant wear and up to 12 hours of hydration. It says their key ingredients are skincare ingredients such as glycerin, matcha and niacinamide. They say how to apply this. They say to use the Bear With Me Hydrating Jelly Primer or the Marshmallow Smoothing Primer, which I have. Then apply a small amount of the foundation. It says a little bit goes a long way. Then buff it out. So up to 16 hours, comfortable, breathable wear, fade and transfer resistant. So we're definitely gonna test that. This sounds like a foundation that I would really like. And I know that the Bear With Me Concealer was really popular. I also did pick that up because I've had this before and I decluttered it because it was actually in too light of a shade. So I got a shade that would work for me better. And I did like the concealer initially. Okay, let's go into the Marshmallow Primer. I actually really do like this primer. I just think it's like this really cool kind of whipped consistency, but I actually thought that it was slightly blurring not like overly blurring but it also helped to make some of my foundations stay longer i never thought it smelled like marshmallows but i do like that it has like a sweet scent to it so i did a little swatch on this hand and here's kind of the comparison of the primers i actually really do like the primer i think that it gives just a little bit of blur and I think it really does like have a little bit of tack to it so it helps the makeup kind of stay underneath. I just noticed a little bit more longevity with some of my foundations when I wear this so I am a fan of this primer overall and it did make it through my past declutter. Okay, let's go into the foundation. I have mine in the shade Light Neutral. Oh, quite a bit actually comes out of that tube. I don't think that's actually very neutral. I think it has a little bit of warmth to it, but it does look like pretty medium coverage on this watch. So I'm going to just take what's on the back of my hand and apply it to my face because it does say like, you know, a little bit goes a long way. So let's test that out. And I'm just going to take a clean makeup sponge and just bounce it in. So I don't think that went a really long way. I think that it gave a little bit of coverage. I wouldn't say it's medium. I'd say like on first application with what I put on the back of my hand. I, I don't know that I, I agree that a little bit really goes a long way. I think it's probably medium coverage if you build it up. So I'm gonna try to, cause I just like a tiny bit more coverage than that was kind of giving me. So that's a little bit more coverage on it. I'm gonna need some help on my nose with this concealer, but I think it's a little bit drying around my nose on first application. I don't think it's a super hydrating formula because I do see that it's a little bit of a matte finish. There's no luminosity to it. And it's kind of an interesting packaging because this packaging makes me feel like it would be a skin tint as opposed to like a blurring semi matte foundation. Yeah, matte blurred finish, medium coverage. So I think it is matte. I think it is slightly blurring, but I find that it's a little bit drying around my nose where I usually need a little extra hydration. And I had to go in with, I think like one and a half pumps. It's hard to say pump because you're just kind of squeezing it. But I would say I probably went in with about this much on that one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. I'm gonna probably start with just half of this and then blend in and then go back for the rest if it seems like I need a little bit more coverage. 
So I, I didn't use the whole pump. I kind of just dabbed like a little bit more onto the sponge and then onto my face. I think that's about the amount of coverage that I want. I can see the matte finish. There's just no radiance. It's like very, very flat. And it's really drying around my nose. And I thought I hydrated pretty well this morning, but it's definitely looking more dry right upon first application, which is usually like, uh-oh, it's a pretty good sign that maybe it doesn't have enough hydration in it and it's gonna end up kind of, I don't know, making my nose look dry and kind of cakey. I hope that doesn't happen. That's why we're going to do the wear test. Sometimes I'm overly surprised at how something wears and meshes with the warmth of my skin. So we'll see how that works out. I mean, I don't think the shade matches bad. I actually think it's like perfect, light neutral. I think it actually was neutral. So there will be more to update you on on the wear test there. Let's move on to the concealer. I got mine in the shade light this time. Last time I ended up getting the concealer in I believe fair and it was way too light for me. And some concealers I actually do get in fair and they work just fine, but that one was pretty true fair. I can't even remember what the consistency of this. I just believe that it was kind of like a medium weight, medium coverage formula but I feel like this had a lot more hydration than the foundation did. So again, I'm just gonna take what's kind of on the back of my hand and apply it to my under eye. But let's conceal the nose. I didn't take everything. I don't think I need to. So I actually do like it for under the eyes. I don't remember it creasing, but we're gonna see. Um, I did end up kind of layering it up twice on this eye because I can just see like this eye is a little bit darker today. I just didn't like the way the concealer is sitting on the nose. Again, it's just looking super dry. That's usually a me problem. But with like a semi-matte finish, it might just be not enough hydration for me. So I'm gonna lightly set under the eyes but not really set too much on the rest of my face. I don't have a NYX setting powder, so I'm just gonna cheat with e.l.f. I do have a NYX Fixing Mist. This is the one from the new Avatar collection. It does say that it has up to 16 hours wear over makeup. I actually thought this was super hydrating when I tried it. I was quite shocked at the quality of this. So I'm gonna use this today. I always feel like that spray, every time I use it, I feel super hydrated even like after the spray has dried down. And sometimes I don't get that. Like after the spray is done, it's just over and all the hydration that you felt when your face was wet was gone. And I actually think this is pretty good quality. I did pick up one of the NYX Wonder Sticks that have gone pretty viral. I haven't tested this yet. This one is in the shade Universal Light. It's a dual ended face shaping stick. And I guess on one end it has like a contour and then on the other it's a highlighter. I'm not a huge fan of stick highlighters, but I do like stick contours. What I'm not a fan of is all the tape that they put on drugstore packaging. There is the component. I'm gonna swatch both of these so I can see their shade and maybe just kind of how creamy they are. I really like the shade of the contour. I think it has a little bit of warmth, so I would almost say like it's slightly a bronzer. I'm not sure about this highlighter. It looks a little bit pasty. Like that's just a more white shade than I think looks good on the skin. Let me blend it in a little bit to kind of see what it looks like. Actually, that's quite pretty. That looks very natural. This actually has an 18 month shelf life for something that is cream. I feel like that's quite a bit. So I'm just gonna apply it like this and I'm gonna try and blend it in with kind of a dense brush and see how it looks. I really like that. It always looks super dark in the viewfinder, but when I play the videos back, it usually looks pretty true to the representation of real life. I think that's actually really pretty. It doesn't necessarily call itself a contour per se. It's more of like a shaping stick. So I think you can use different shades of this as contours if you wanted to, but it's also more of like a bronzer. It's just meant for shaping, not necessarily like strictly contouring. I think you could use this in kind of a multitude of ways, depending upon like what shade you got. I thought it was really beautiful and very easy to blend. So, so far, I think this is a pretty good like stick product. I would say that I would probably just apply one side and then kind of blend it in as opposed to all over my face because I can feel it kind of getting a little bit dried down by the time I'm kind of blending it in. That's really pretty. Okay, I like that shade. Pretty neutral, going for the forehead. Okay, I'm doing the close-up test. Yeah, I don't think it lifted any of the foundation and I think it's really pretty. So far, I'm really liking that. I am gonna use a NYX blush. This is again from the Avatar collection. I actually really like this palette. It's a really strange like putty formula. Like it's not powder, but it's really pigmented. You get a lot just from a little bit of a swatch, but if you watch me like depress it, 
it looks like putty and the highlighters are the same. I don't want to use the highlighters in this palette because I do want to use the stick today, but I am going to use this more orangey blush down here at the bottom, which is called Electrifying. And it, it picks up like quite a bit on just a fluffy brush. Like even though it's like this putty formula, I have no issues with a fluffy brush getting this to pick up and just translate on the cheeks. This is one of my favorite products from that collection. I actually thought the quality of this was really good and these were super wearable colors. So I've been enjoying this palette. This is not a shade that I really like, but I thought this was very unique to have this like yellowy blush in my collection. Do you guys see how kind of airbrushed that looks? I think the blush has a really beautiful finish and I really like this palette. These are all on sale already, even though they're a recent launch. I saw them on Ulta and they're already on sale. So I would say that like if you wanted to try like this NYX blush palette, I actually think that it's a really good quality. Let's take this NYX stick highlighter and I'm going to just draw it onto my face because I think that's kind of the intention with this. And I'm just going to blend it out with my finger. Okay, hey, that's like one of the few stick highlighters that I actually like. I don't usually like stick highlighters. I don't think this has any glitters in it, and I think it's really natural. I think it responds to the warmth of your skin really well, or like the warmth of your finger, I meant. But yeah, I just think that it, it meshes in with your skin very nicely for a really natural finish. And sometimes natural is good. I am someone who likes kind of a punchier highlighter, but I think this is actually quite beautiful if you're looking for something natural. So, so, so far I'm actually really liking that stick. Let's move on into eyeshadow. I'm gonna do something super quick using the new Way of the Water Collection eyeshadow palette. And I'm probably just gonna throw on this Turok shade right here, just really quickly in the crease, move on with my life because that is not the focus of this video. Okay, I just gave myself a little bit of color, but to kind of add on to this palette, I think the quality of the mattes are really good, very blendable and pigmented. I think it's the same putty formula that's also in the cheek palette. What I don't like about this is that the shimmers are not very good quality. They're a little bit more wet of a formula and so they tend to transfer when I apply them to my lid and also they're just not super reflective, like they're not overly pigmented. So the eyeshadow palette, I don't think it's bad and I like the color story, I just prefer the mattes over NYX formula shimmers. So I can already see that the foundation is sinking in a little bit to my smile lines. It's not bad yet, but yeah, it's it's a matte finish. It's really, really like drying. I'm throwing on more spray because I feel like I need the extra hydration. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm not buying that like 12 hour hydration claim just yet, unfortunately. So I want to throw something in here and cheat a little bit. Milani did release the highly rated lash extensions tubing mascara that I want to try in today's video because I don't know. It also a new launch that was drugstore and it came with my order for the NYX Blur Foundation. So I need to try this because I've seen at least a couple people on YouTube YouTube talk about this and I'm really into tubing mascaras. Yeah, this is like the quintessential standard tubing mascara wand. So I'm going to start to throw this on. I have to get a little bit closer to the mirror because I'm just blind, but I'll try and do this in like real time so you guys can kind of see the effect that it's giving. It's creating a very fluffy, like natural lash. No chunks. That is one coat on my right eye. I think it's beautiful. I think you could really build this up because it feels like a really wet formula, but I, I won't. I only use one coat. So this is flake-free tubing mascara for instantly longer and lifted lashes. 16 hour clump proof, smudge proof wear, effortlessly removes with just warm water. 93% had instantly lifted longer looking lashes. So I'm really excited to see how this wears and I'm really excited to see whether or not it transfers or flakes. I'm pretty rough on my mascara so I can usually tell right away if it's gonna be something that starts to flake off because I'll take like a nap in the middle of the day and it's like I'll wake up and you know, I don't know. You get varying results with different mascaras but so far with one coat, doesn't that look like really natural looking? I can already tell this is probably gonna be a mascara that I really enjoy using. And honestly, lately, I've been kind of disappointed with drugstore mascaras. So when I saw this come out, I was like, well, that's definitely coming with me. 
It's definitely a wetter formula, which is something that I always say that I like. Give me a little bit more of a wet formula and it gives me more time to like work because I feel like I take a long time to do my eyelashes. I'm just not somebody who's super fast at it, but the problem with sometimes overly wet mascaras is that if it's too wet, it kind of transfers. I have a higher tendency to accidentally get it onto my skin and I'm kind of doing that with this mascara. It's just a very light and fluffy and airy mascara. And on this side, I got a cut really close to my lash line, so I made a little bit of an oopsie. But yeah, I mean, close up, it's just really wispy looking. It's a very clean lash. There's no clumps or anything. It just doesn't, like, it's not overly pigmented on the first coat. It's pretty good. And without, like, a really punchy eye look, I think you can see it. I did curl my lashes today, which I've been forgetting to do a lot. And so I feel like you can see that quite a bit like they just look very curled so i don't think that the mascara itself is curling i'm gonna put on one of my nyx lip pencils this one is in the shade nude pink and then i'm gonna go into my nyx lingerie xxl and then this one is in the shade it's expose me triple x expose me xx expose me and i'm gonna throw this on really quickly I'll do a little swatch for you on that. I should have done that one. But I think this is a really beautiful like color. It's a very everyday wearable color. Good because I'm going to the store after this and uh, yeah, I've got some shopping to do before Christmas. Got to get everything done. I'm totally last minute this year, which I don't like to be, but it is what it is. But this is a really like whipped matte formula. Like it's pretty comfortable. I think that it will sink into your lip lines if you just leave it and don't top it. And it takes a little bit longer to dry. It's not one of those matte formulas that you put on and it instantly dries. It has a little bit of a slip to it, a little bit longer than some of my other matte formulas. And I think that it's, I don't know, it's bouncy and it's comfortable, but I'm gonna go in with the NYX, this is Juice Gloss, and I have mine in the shade Pomegranate Clout. And I'm gonna just top this really quickly to give this a little bit of hydration. I think NYX does a really good job on this gloss. It does have a little bit of pigmentation and it does smell and taste like pomegranate <laughs> everything's on let's kind of go through each of the products that i have like a first impressions on and then we'll come back and i will update you on the wear test of the foundation but i'm a fan of this primer i think it's a little bit of a mattifying primer so you do have to be careful and them saying that it pairs well with this might actually not be the case because i do think that they're both kind of mattifying and so for me someone who's got really dry skin and i'm 38 years old i can definitely tell that it's like a, a matter drier kind of consistency and formula but i do overall like this primer i think this right away i would probably use a more hydrating primer with this in the future because i feel like it is such a matte finish but it's kind of like that whipped matte and so it's a little bit more drying the fact that it claims to have 12 hour hydration i don't know we will test that out and then the fixing mist i, I actually like this like this is one of the few kind of like fixing mists that I feel like actually feels like it rejuvenates the foundation underneath after I'm done spraying it. So, so far I've liked that. The Bear With Me Concealer, so far it's not creasing. I think that the cheek palette so far from NYX is actually kind of one of my favorite. I just think that the bouncy formula is actually really pigmented and it looks very soft and airy on the cheeks. And then the eyeshadow palette, I like the mattes, I told you that. Not a huge fan of the shimmer. I can tell you with this mascara, I was looking down and like reading things and like looking down for you. And then I noticed that it started to transfer onto my lower lashes because it's a wetter formula. I was like, I didn't put any mascara on my lower lashes. And I was like, well, it did. So yeah, it takes a while for that to dry down. So we will see whether or not this transfers. So that's it for me putting everything on, you guys. I will check back with you in a couple of hours and we will see how the foundation has held up. Okay, we are back. So it is now 2.37 and I put the makeup on at like nine o'clock this morning before I went out, braved the world on the day before Christmas Eve. It was a little crazy. I did go to Walmart. I don't know what I was thinking, but had to get some last minute shopping done and it was 65 degrees and humid. It's actually sunnier now outside than it was at 9 a.m. this morning. It was overcast, but it was like raining all evening. So I was out there sweating quite a bit. I could feel myself like just <laughs> the stress and just the sweat from the humidity. So the foundation actually held up really nicely in the, the humidity and like how much I was sweating. I think the highlighter you can even still see on. I think the blush is a little bit faded, but the contour stick, I can still see it. So definitely like the highlight and the contour is still good. What I can say about the foundation is 
it actually sinks into the skin a little bit nicer as like the day goes on but if you can see around my nose it did look really dry and it has started to like separate which is always the problem issue for me is that if it's just not enough of a hydrating foundation then yeah sometimes the heavier foundations will tend to kind of break a part of my nose which it did it's definitely a matte finish i think this is probably a really good foundation for people with oilier skin i don't think this is really intended for people with dry skin which is what i have so if you have dry skin this may not be the best foundation. I do think the coverage is nice. I'm really digging this wonder stick, so I can see why that has been popular. In terms of the mascara, there's been no flaking. It still looks like perfect and beautiful. After it dried down, there was like no more transferring. So I think this is a really good mascara. It's just not very volumizing. The Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions actually is a little bit more pigmented. Like it gives you more volume and more of a like a wet or just thicker formula. This is definitely a thinner formula on the Milani mascara. It just gives that really clean kind of wispy lash while making them look a little bit longer. So I mean overall I think the foundation is okay. I just really think it's it's made for people with more oily skin and it wore better than I thought it would. I, I thought it was going to come back up here and it was going to look terrible. I think the only place that it started to kind of come off because it was breaking was on my nose but everywhere else it actually seems to kind of look really good and have warmed up to the warmth of my skin. So is this a foundation for people People with dry skin? Mm, I don't know. Maybe with a more hydrating primer on underneath. But that was my review of everything, you guys. I hope this wear test was a little bit helpful. It, you know, I had it on for about five and a half hours, so that's usually a good test. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful December. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.